Okay, welcome back. This is part two of my uh, gasifier build. Um, essentially, you've seen from my, uh, my first video that I'm producing some, uh, some wood gas um, from my gasifier behind me here, but I'm not entirely happy with it just yet. I don't think I've got it quite right. It's burning, but it's fairly unstable. Um, I'm getting sort of collapses in the, the, in, in the hearth, and I'm also getting hang-ups as well. So it's good for about half an hour or so, and then it uh, either collapses, burns out, um, I have a sort of uh, a flashback as it were and um, anyway so I'm not quite there so what I've done is I've taken the guts out of it um, inside that's the reduction zone and all this kind of stuff so I'll show you what I've got in my uh, workshop behind me and um, I'm just going to go through a few modifications that I'm going to make and just see if that makes any difference at all. Right inside the workshop now I've taken the guts out of my um, gasifier and this is what we've got so essentially anything above this plate here is inside that propane tank which holds um, all the wood chips above here and then anything below here is um, inside the 55 gallon drum um, out of which comes all the uh, wood gas at the bottom there and then out through the uh, the exit pipe but um, what I'm really concerned about is um, my constriction here is only about uh, 50 mil about two inch or there or thereabouts and uh, what I'm finding is I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of bridging issues and I went back to the FEMA plans um, which sort of mentioned inverts but they um, really just do their own FEMA design which is a little bit more simpler but has a higher tar uh, problem. They've said in the invert method is that anything under about sort of two three inch or so um, you're going to have bridging issues so uh, that's why on the invert systems used for vehicles it's this constant juddering around uh, whilst driving that puts the um, wood chips or shakes the wood chips down into the uh, constriction zone now of course if it's just sitting on a pallet like I've got that's not going to happen so um, I've had a bit of a rethink really thinking two inch is going to be far too small and too problematic for the type of chips that I'm using um, so I'm going to increase the size to a three inch um, again this might be a bit too small I'm not sure but I'm going to try it on a three inch constriction rather than two inch and um, so I'm going to have to make some more cones now um, this one I I bought but uh, this has only got a two inch at the bottom so I'm going to do with do away with that and I'm going to have to make some more cones like this one and the one below now I've, I've started um, making one here and um, but I thought rather than just sort of show you one which I've made I'll just sort of show you the process that I've gone through um, now this is again another recommendation from Flash so if you've not seen his videos I strongly recommend you going over to his channel because they're absolutely superb but what he did is he got um, a cone making program um, and I've actually printed mine, I'll put it in the description um, as well but uh, that's the site that I've used. So what I'm going to do with this template is just cut round the uh, the lines there and I'll end up with the, uh, the cone template and then all I do then is I just put it onto my 2 mil steel that I'm using here um, cut it out with a jigsaw and then what I do is it's a suggestion from Flash actually is that you just clamp it onto a, a sturdy bit of scaffolding pole um, heat it up along the lines and then you beat the living daylights out of it with a with a big hefty mallet and it will eventually bend and one little top tip I've uh, I learned when making cones like this is that you start on the ends first and then do the middle ones if you if you start off trying to bend the uh, bend it in the middle it's it's much harder to when it comes to the ends to bend those around um, so I'm going to close uh, you know just heat the ones up here and make this a complete cone and then I'm going to basically put it um, on there you can see the general idea is what I'm trying to do um, and that will be a slight modification on my constriction zone okay it's all put back together again now so I'm just going to light it with my gas torch take long to light only um, well but you can see how long it took and now I'm getting a nice smoke through the stack there 
So I'm just going to leave that for um, a minute or so just to flush through the system to get rid of uh, most of the oxygen in there so that we can try lighting it. Okay, I've had it burning away for about two minutes now. In fact, I set my stopwatch on the, um, the top there. So it's been going for about two minutes. So I'm just going to try lighting the flare. I'm not too sure if it's going to go um, this quickly after lighting it, but at least we fluff through the system um, and we'll just have a go. Let's have a look. There we go. And now I'm running on uh, the invert style with the, uh, the lid closed just behind me there. And uh, I'm now running a three inch constriction as opposed to my previous two inch constriction. And I've been running it now for just over 35 minutes, 40 minutes or so. I'm still getting a nice flare in the, uh, the background there, somewhere around there. Uh, it is running through the filters, but uh, I'm still getting a slightly orange flame, uh, which means my filtration isn't quite right just yet. But uh, I'm going to keep running it as long as I can on the um, amount of wood chips that I've got, uh, which are these ones here. Um, ideally, I really want to use these chips because I've got absolutely shed loads of them and I can, um, I can get lots really easily and dry them out really easily. So I ideally want to run on wood chips rather than wood pellets. Uh, or um, any other thing really. So um, I'm just going to keep it, keep it going. Okay, we're coming up to about an hour now on my uh, little timer now. Um, I've got a, a really nice flare going, but uh, I also wanted to just do some temperature checks so I could show you how hot this thing is getting. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised at how cool uh, everything should be, except the bits that should be hot as it were. So um, on the hopper itself, uh, up here, this is just the wood hopper. I'm getting uh, 34 degrees, 35 degrees in Fahrenheit, that's 95, so that's quite cool. Um, the reaction um, vessel itself uh, down here, it's about uh, 131 Fahrenheit. In the centigrade, that's about 56. Um, the door's cool, so that's uh, okay. Uh, the exit around here, uh, that's running quite cool at 40 degrees. That's 103 in, in Fahrenheit. Um, over to this side, oh, a little bit warmer there. The cyclone filter, uh, 105 uh, degrees, 40 degrees centigrade. Um, coming down there, 36 centigrade, 96 Fahrenheit. So, cool. And then coming round to the, um, my very simple radiator. This is, this is hardly any temperature at all. Um, so let's have a quick look at this. We've got 65 Fahrenheit, which in centigrade is 20, 18, 22, which is about air temperature, to be honest. Um, the exit tube, sorry, beforehand, I should have done that before. That's 37 in Fahrenheit. That's about 99, 100 thereabouts. Uh, up here, gets a lot cooler as we go up. 75 Fahrenheit, 23 degrees centigrade. So as I said, done the radiator, it gets much cooler down here. You can feel it getting cooler, so we're about 20 degrees, 68. And I'm coming through into the T-junction. Sorry, it's a bit dirty. I've had a, a few splashes. 75 Fahrenheit, 21 degrees. And then um, go through the, through the plastic filters there. And then by the time it gets uh, just above the flare, it's 21 degrees. It's really not dropping in temperature from the radiator, uh, but then the air temperature is about 20 degrees, so you're not going to expect it to get um, anything lower than that. Uh, so 20 degrees centigrade, 68 Fahrenheit before it goes up to the flare at the top. Now, it's, uh, it's getting a little bit darker here, but as you can see, I've got a really orange flame. Uh, which isn't what I want. I want a blue flame, ideally. So I'm going to work on my filtration. It's going through the filters at the moment, so I haven't got it quite right, the filtration. So the three filters that I've got behind me here um, are filled with uh, scrubbers, metal scrubbers, uh, wood, sh um, wood shavings, and also um, sort of fiberglass insulation type, really fine um, stuff. Um, I haven't got any sort of um, filtration socks or anything like that, so I might have to invest in some of those. They're quite cheap but they should take out anything under, uh, sorry, anything over about 10 microns, something like that. But uh, I'm getting a really good flare. I'm well over an hour now into um, this burn. 
um, and I've done a probably, I'm guessing now, I've probably done about three kilos of uh, wood chips, but what I will do in my next video is actually weigh out a set amount of wood chips, put it through the uh, gasifier and see just how long it uh, burns for, and then I should have an idea as to how many wood chips I need to say run the generator for two hours, three hours, however long. So um, that will give me a better idea. But anyway, I'll put that into uh, another video for you. Okay, so um, anyway, I think it's probably about it for this video to be honest. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the like button and uh, I'll catch you in the next video anyway. But until then, bye for now.